Jim Collins with Coleman today. I'm down at the Coleman Elks Lodge with Coleman County Republican Chairman Wade Harbison. Wade, it's your first time running the meeting. How did you feel like it went? I think it went really well. We had a great attendance for our meeting today. This is actually one of the uh, biggest breakfasts that we've had in a long time. I think a lot of people were excited about uh, President Trump being elected, so this was kind of a big celebration today. Uh, and it's always good because, of course, we celebrate in Coleman County. Almost all of our elected officials are Republicans. We're very proud of that. Uh, they're great to support us, so we're glad to see all of them here today as well. Well, you had a big crowd, and you had your vice chairman by your side. He's brand new as well. Absolutely. Alex J. Cheney. Yes. Can we talk to him next? Sure. Alex, it's your first meeting as vice chairman. How'd it go for you? I'm just here to look pretty. Wade did all the heavy lifting, so uh, <laughs> he did a great job. I told him he had some heavy shoes to fill, big shoes to fill with Kelly stepping down, and I think he did a great job today. Well, you guys were, saw him off and gave him a nice drawing of himself, and he seemed touched and, and honored by that. And Now that he's grown his beard out, and you guys being clean cut, it's a nice move uh, in looks for you, everyone. Now, Alex, we have a, a special guest day here, don't we? Yes, sir. Uh, we were fortunate enough here to have Secretary of State John Merrill with us today. Uh, I'd like to him to talk about a little bit what he does as Secretary of State for y'all. Secretary of State John Merrill, thanks for coming to Coleman. Tim, I'm always delighted to be in Coleman County. Coleman County is one of the finest counties in the state of Alabama. And I know people will say, well, he says that everywhere he goes. And I am fortunate to be able to say that a lot of times. But there's something different and special about Coleman. And the people that live here know that. That's one of the things that they're the most proud of. The thing that makes me the proudest of having the opportunity to be here as an honored guest each and every time I arrive is how well they receive me and how they treat me like I'm one of their own. That's a distinct honor for me. Well, I'm gonna. It, it, it must feel great, and I'm gonna do something a little different. I usually ask all the questions. I'm just gonna ask one question, and then give Alex and Wade a chance to ask a question. My question is this: I, I meet people all the time, and I'm big in sensing people's destiny. And it, it, my sense is you were, you are, for whatever reason, destined to be Secretary of State of this this great uh, republic here. When did you know you wanted to be Secretary of State? Well, when I was 14 years old, my dad was the probate judge of Cleburne County, and one of the things that he was charged to do because of his role was to coordinate events and activities that went on at the courthouse related to political functions. And I remember in the fall of 1978, that year was the year that the primary was held in September and the runoff would also be held in September. But we had an old-fashioned political gathering late July, early August of 78 there in Cleveland County at the courthouse in Heflin. And we had a lot of candidates that came and visit. And I remember distinctly uh, there was a young man, nice-looking, tall uh, guy who was out there campaigning. And I went to my dad and I said, Daddy, who is that guy and what's he running for? And he said his name is Don Siegelman. He's running for Secretary of State. And I said, well, what does the Secretary of State do? He said, well, Secretary of State is responsible for elections, election administration, business corporations, licensing, trademarking, and international adoptions. And I said, well, that sounds like something I might be interested in looking at sometime. So I started following Siegelman's campaign. I saw him be elected in 78. He got reelected in 82. And then Glenn Browder got elected in 86. And then he got elected to Congress in a special election. So Perry Hand was appointed to fill that unexpired term. And then Billy Joe Kemp beat him. And then after he went to be the director of ADO, Jim Bennett became the Secretary of State. And he served for 10 years. Then Nancy Worley served for a term. Beth Chapman served for six years. And then Jim Bennett came back and finished. And I followed Secretary Bennett. So when I tell you I've been watching that office, paying attention to what each one of those secretaries have done over the last 40 years and making notes on what I would do if I had the privilege to be there, then you know I'm serious and I'm sincere. And we've had a lot of support out of the legislature. We've been able to make a lot of positive changes in the state because of the success that we've enjoyed and because of support that we've enjoyed from so many people. Well, they, they always say that destiny uh, meets hard work and you'll be successful. Sounds like you've done both. Thank you for that. I appreciate it so much. Mr. Secretary, I was just wondering, you mentioned elections. I know your administration has implemented a lot of changes in election law um, and regulations. Can you tell us a little bit about those today? We have, Alex, and the thing that makes it so special and unique for the voter is that we've streamlined the process and so voters can now register for the first time or change their voter registration information on the phone with your Android or your um, um, iPhone iPhone yeah. or your, your Android or your iPhone, you'll be able to do that. Or you can do it on a computer. As long as you have a valid Alabama driver's license, you're able to access 
the website and to upload your information. And that's really made it a lot more convenient for our people. The other thing that was unique to the election cycle that we just experienced was having the opportunity to introduce electronic poll books to our voters from 25 different counties in the state of Alabama where they were able to go and check in in an expedited process and instead of doing it the old-fashioned way with a highlighter and signing your name that uh, people were able to check against the Alabama law enforcement signature that's on your driver's license and go ahead and be processed exponentially faster than you would be otherwise. It increased the opportunity for participation uh, 60 to 75 percent faster than it had been before. Everybody here in Coleman County talking about uh, business licenses and processes that were taking very, very long amounts of time when you came in, uh, you know, up to eight or nine months almost. Uh, you know, you've drastically cut down on that. Uh, can you just tell us a little bit about how you were able to accomplish that? We have. We've reduced that to one day, and it was not an easy process, but when we started at the Office of the Secretary of State, we had 49 employees. Today we have 37 employees, and that change has occurred because some people did not want to be a part of the team. Sure. They were used to doing things the way that they've done them for many years, and, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, uh, when you don't change, then things usually don't work out well for you. Uh, you can ask the dinosaurs yes. about that. <laughs> but what we do know is that if you can modify your behavior and, and you change to become more efficient, more effective, everybody benefits. And we've been able to reduce that wait time for business filings from seven to nine months down to one day. So the day that we receive that paperwork, we're able to process that paperwork. And we've done that now for 31 consecutive weeks. That's very impressive. And that's an awesome thing for, you know, the voters in the state of Alabama, the people, you know, that you're holding accountable to that you made it so much more efficient. So. Well, and if we've done it with less people. That's even more efficient. And less money because we take no money from the general fund. Absolutely. Every dime that we operate on comes from resources that have been generated within the Office of the Secretary of State. So we have to be very judicious in the use of those resources. Absolutely. Well, thank you for being here. We appreciate you coming to thank the breakfast this morning, and we appreciate you coming to Coleman. So thank you. All right, John, I got one last question. And it's not my question. I had it from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different people, right, after the breakfast. They want to know one simple thing. Are you going to be running for governor in 2018? Well, Tim, it's nice of you to ask that on behalf of those people that introduced the question to you. But this is the thing that, that I had as a singular goal when I ran for Secretary of State. I want to be recognized by our citizens as the best Secretary of State Alabama has ever had. And if we're able to continue to produce results like we produced in the last 24 months and 15 days, then I believe that at some point in the future, people will want want me to serve them in another capacity because they'll believe that we can provide that kind of leadership and make those kind of positive changes in another area. And if they don't believe that, then they'll send me back to 1549 Mallard Circle in Tuscaloosa and I'll find something else to do.